And good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Brian Holiday Hoops Tournament Girls Basketball. We got two games tonight and two games tomorrow, and the first game will feature Stryker versus Fairview. The second game will feature Brian versus Paulding. I'm Thad Goff alongside Chris Malinga here on the Golden Bears Sports Network, and uh, a pretty good game sits in front of us to start out. Fairview versus Stryker. These are two teams that uh, come into the season at seven and one apiece, seven and one overall. Stryker four and one in league play. Fairview has yet to play a league game, but both teams playing pretty well as far as records go. At least. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Stryker is always a, a big time team. Last year, the Brian Golden Bears upset the upset Stryker in the, uh, the the championship game last year. Uh, they lost a big player in Haley Dorman, and this year they actually lost to Eden. They lost to the Bombers of Eden. They haven't lost to Eden in, in years, and so uh, that was a big thing, and it kind of shows that this team can be beat, you know, under coach Steve Brown. Meanwhile, Fairview has made a change at coach. Russell Zedike's now the coach, and they've actually improved their, their uh, fortunes at 7-1. and one. They have Mercedes Wagner, who is one of their post players. She's going to go play basketball at Wayne State, and uh, I remember her from last year. She was on the, uh, the uh, all-tournament team, and uh, just a good job uh, for the Stryker Panthers, and she's back. I believe she was first team all-conference a year ago in the Green Meadows Conference, so another accolade there for for Mercedes Wagner. And also, speaking of that, uh, that striker team, yeah, they lost... Yeah, they, they lost Haley Dorman, who had scored over 1,000 points in her career, over 1,300 points in her career. But they also do return a lot of talent. They got four seniors starting this year, Emma Grime, Brittany Haynes, Anna Stuckey, and Courtney Stewart. So you got to imagine that those are probably the players that Steve Brown is going to rely on to try and try and get the win here tonight. Well, I mean, Stryker has always been one of those teams that they don't rebuild, they reload, and it's just player after player comes through. And, and they're, they're like that on both the boys and the girls' sides. You know, uh, I can remember, uh, Connor Varner is an assistant coach now with them, and I can remember when Connor played in this tournament just a few years ago, and she was awesome. So, I mean, it's just a, a, a program that's been very storied in ladies' basketball throughout Northwest Ohio and uh, continuing to go on. And, you know, you're right, they... They've got their point guard coming back. They've got uh, a couple of post players coming back and, uh, you know, inside players. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it shouldn't be a, a bad situation for Stryker, uh, you know, losing Dorman. But she was a big, big-time player. On the other side, you know, Brian lost uh, Allie Miner, who scored over 1,000 points in her career as well. So, I mean, these teams, you just have to see who's the next, one, next man up or next woman up, as they say. Steve Brown has won over 300 games in his career as a head coach at Stryker. He reached that milestone, if I'm not mistaken, in 2016 was when that took place. So we got a few minutes left until we get things started here at Bryan High School. Two games back-to-back. -back. The first one set to start at 6 o'clock. The winner of this game plays in the championship round tomorrow night. And the loser of this game will play in the loser's bracket game. That loser's bracket game will be first followed by the championship game. We'll take a quick break here on the Golden Bears Sports Network. And welcome back, everyone, to this edition of High School Basketball on the Golden Bears Sports Network. It's girls basketball tonight and tomorrow. And the Holiday Classic here at Bryan High School. Two days, four games of basketball for you. The first one set to take place in just a few moments between Stryker and Fairview. And then we've got Bryan versus Paulding. These are all interconference matchups, these games are. This game features Fairview out of the Green Meadows Conference and striker out of the Buckeye Border Conference. Now, these two teams, it's been a while since each, either one of them has played. Fairview last played against Delta 10 days ago on December 18th. And the last game for Stryker was against Wasion on the 20th. So eight days ago was their last game. So they've both been kind of, uh, well, they've both been off the court as far as games have been concerned. Probably gotten a chance to celebrate the Christmas holiday between then and now. But uh, you do wonder how much, uh, you, do, you do wonder how fresh they're going to be out on the court. Absolutely. You know, it's holiday break time. And uh, I talked a little bit to Nikki Grind, who's the Fairview JV coach. The Fairview JV team won. She said it wasn't pretty, but it's what you expect after a holiday and so she's hoping that the varsity does not have that kind of uh of drop off incidentally uh that in 2016 these two teams played in the championship game in this tournament striker won 64 to 42 last year a uh, striker was a uh, a loser in the uh the um 
in the um, no I'm sorry 16 uh, they were last year's striker lost to Brian I'm getting my years mixed up um, so yeah and uh, you know this year it'll be interesting to see what happens I mean coach Brown's team's always tough and Fairview's on the rise as we said lot to look forward to in this matchup again Fairview 7 and 1 on the season 11 and 11 last year so obviously they've taken the jump forward under head coach Russell Zedek but striker they're kind of an established power if you will their head coach Steve Brown already 300 wins in his career so far this season yeah I mean that's pretty amazing when you think about it having 300 wins in a season you gotta I'm be so, I'm, I'm sorry 300 wins in his career yeah yeah, I misspoke I mean, that, yeah and I, I went right along with you but that you're right um you know it's 300 wins in a career is a lot of a lot of wins especially you know at a, a school like striker you know it's it's a small school and you know hey they're they're doing really well and he's just he's a, a coach's coach and uh, Fairview you said was seven and one and I'm trying to pull up some of their uh, their schedule as far as uh, who they lost to and defeated so their, well, their only loss was their most recent game that was against Delta ten days ago and right. uh, it was a, it was a blowout loss it would not yeah. have been fun for those girls 68 to 42 yeah. was the final in right that one. and they beat Delphi's Jefferson, Patrick Henry, Archbold, uh, Hicksville, Wasion, Continental, North Central. Now look at uh, you know, look at that the NWIL teams. They beat Patrick Henry, Archbold, and Wasion. So they'd be uh, three and zero in the in the NWIL, three and one with Delta. So you know that's some uh, interesting stuff there. That uh, all these non-league conference games. One of these teams will play Brian tomorrow, but before we can find that out, we got to find out what happens tonight. And before we can find that out, we got the national anthem coming up here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Some people say that Bob Stanton and Santa might be the same guy. Just like Santa, Bob makes people really happy when he hands them the keys to their new Ford car or truck. Both are jolly guys who love kids and cookies. Plus, when was the last time you saw Bob and Santa in the same place at the same time? He's got a point. If a new Ford or Lincoln is in your holiday plans, come see Santa, uh, I mean, Bob Sam at Brian Ford Lincoln. When Cameron's family came to us with a plea for help, we put our minds and our hearts into creating a solution. Selfless teamwork made the impossible possible. NSCC really is the heart of education. For over 40 years, Bryan, Ohio has been home to the only import vehicle repair specialist in Northwest Ohio, Suburban Auto. Whether it's an Asian or European vehicle, Suburban has the knowledge and experience to keep your import or domestic car running strong. Do you have a hybrid vehicle that's acting up? Suburban is your one-stop hybrid repair shop. Don't be fooled by the one-size-fits-all repair shops. There is no substitute for experience. Come see the import repair pros, Suburban Auto. At Creel Funeral Service, we are professionals with the sincere desire to reward every family who have placed their trust and confidence in us by being attentive to every detail, displaying the highest level of courtesy and compassion, and providing the greatest measure of respect for their wishes. As Remembrance Planners, our goal is to help families find joy in the way they choose to remember, honor, and celebrate the wonderful life of their loved one. Creel Funeral Service, we are experts at helping hearts heal. Striker and Fairview here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Game number one of the Holiday Classic, and we'll send it down to Lennon Spies, our PA announcer. For their important role in tonight's game, our officials this evening are Mr. Dustin Gray, Mr. Michael Magoo, and Mr. Corey Miller. In order to make tonight's contest as enjoyable as possible, please represent your school and community in a positive and respectful manner. That means follow the rules, speak and act responsibly, and show courtesy and respect for your fellow fans, the officials and coaches, the administration and authority figures, and of course, your team and opponents. Let's make tonight's contest great and remember to respect the game. Now let's meet the players in tonight's game. First, the visitors on the scoreboard, striker Lady Panthers. A 5'2 senior, number one, Brittany Haynes. A 5'10 junior, number 14, Mackenzie Caldwell. A 5'8 junior, number 15, Courtney Stewart. A 5'10 senior, number 20, Anna Stuckey. 
And a 5'6 senior, number 24, Emma Grimm. The Panthers are coached by Mr. Steve Brown, assisted by Eric King and Connor Barner. Now the starting lineups for the Fairview Lady Apaches. A 5'2 junior, number 10, Kendall Baker. A 6'1 senior, number 20, Mercedes Wagner. A 5'6 sophomore, number 23, Michelle Marshall. A 5'8 sophomore, number 24, Olivia Rosizia. And a 5'8 junior, number 34, Riley Mueller. The Apaches are coached by Mr. Russ Dedike, assisted by Allison O'Neill. So there's the starting lineups as we are set to get things started here at the Holiday Classic. Stryker taking on Fairview in this first game. The winner of this game takes on the winner of Bryan versus Paulding in the championship game tomorrow night. That's set to start at 7.30. They'll have the, I guess you would call it the third place game right yep. before that. Set to start at 6. Game. Yep. Mackenzie Caldwell set to tip for Stryker. And she gives up three inches to Mercedes, Mercedes Wagner, so... Mercedes Wagner, all Green Meadows Conference a year ago. It's already committed to Wayne State College. Wayne State University, I believe. Yep. And the tip is won eventually by the Panthers. Fairview looks to set up. They start out in a man-to-man. -man. And the Panthers work the ball to the corner. This is Courtney Stewart feeding across the court. Back to the top of the key here, Stewart, one-on-one, -on -one, gets to the glass and finishes. Nice look by Courtney Stewart, able to get her open wide and just make that backdoor cut and get a, a good bucket. A little full court pressure here by the Panthers right off the made basket. The Apache's able to get that ball across the timeline. Back to the top of the key for Risika. Risika, I beg your pardon. She looks to drive. Out to the top of the key, three on the way, two. Oh, it's good, off the glass. Michelle Marshall with the bank. First bucket of the night for Fairview. They've got the lead, three to two. They are the home team in this game. Here's Stewart in the paint, knocks it down. So Stewart with both buckets for, for Stryker. Full court press again. And Wagner will get it across the timeline. It's an early touch. Really nobody down low there for Rasika to try to get the ball to. And now a pull-up jumper is good. And there's Marshall again. So right now it's the Courtney Stewart versus Michelle Marshall show. <laughs> Five for Marshall, four for Stewart. Defender falls down, and that was Marshall who fell down. And the bucket there goes to number 20, Anna Stuckey. Actually, that's Brittany Haynes that was able to come down there and make that. A bigger part, you're right. Six to five, Stryker with the early lead. Back and forth already in this one. Here's Wagner, kicks it outside. And we're gonna get a foul called on the drive by Marshall, and we'll see who gets called for the foul. It's gonna be, they say, 2-1. That's Ilio Waterfield. I, I think no they Haynes. called that on just no one on Haynes. He said 2-1, didn't he? But he, he meant one. It certainly sounded like he did. inbound in the direction of Kirsten Klein. Klein in the game for the first time. Good drive, but the bucket doesn't go. Rasika couldn't put that one home. And here comes Brittany Hayes up the floor. Late feed and stolen away. Back come the Golden Bears, and there's a foul, a reach-in foul. And that's going to be going against Emma Grime. First foul, second team foul. Two for the team. This is Riley Mueller set to inbound, and Grimm will stay in the ball game. It's early in the game, of course. And the inbound goes to Wagner. Wagner has yet to score in the game tonight. 
there she goes and cut off oh. well. And that might be traveling. No call. They're saying she didn't have possession of the basketball, I think. It's not going to matter. They turn it over anyway out of bounds. Well, I mean, if, if she didn't have possession of the ball, it can't be a travel, but I can see the point. It was kind of iffy right there. But thus, it's for Fairview's first turnover. Kinsey Myers in the game, meanwhile, for Stryker, and they give the ball up to number 14, Caldwell. Mackenzie Caldwell, and she gets fouled. And I believe that's Klein who's going to be called for that one. Nope, it's going to be Marshall. Michelle Marshall. That'll be her first team first. And Marshall committed to Lane State University. She's a senior this year. Bring it back to the top of the key. Number one, Brittany Haynes with a feed inside. Good double team with the bucket goes. That's Caldwell. Nice job by her. The double team able to get through it and uh, put down the bucket. Here's a drive. Shot doesn't go. It was blocked. And into the hands of Caldwell. Haynes across the timeline, feeds it to the corner. It's back to the top of the key. A man to man look. And a three on the way. That's good. Emma Grimm. And it's an 11 5 lead for Stryker. Well, Stryker made some adjustments after the first couple of Fairview possessions, and they're swarming defense a little bit now, and it's been a little tougher for that was Fairview Wagner. or anything. It was Wagner who knocked that one out of bounds, so it'll go back to Stryker. Another turnover for Stryker. That's three for them. I'm sorry, Fairview. Stryker has none. Fairview, I believe, has not yet scored since the since let, uh, over six minutes to go. It's been a bit of a drought here in these last few minutes for the Apaches. Good backdoor cut. Haynes blocked. Wow. That was Wagner. Mercedes Wagner up the floor, but that's nearly stolen. That, that was not a good pass, and they're going to get a foul call. And the call is on. Olivia Rasika. Yeah, that'll be um, her first. That's going to be an offensive foul. I'm shocked that they didn't whistle Wagner down at the other end on that block. She made a ton of contact. It looked for a moment like Fairview might get something out of it, but instead they turn it over. Back to the top of the key for Haynes. Only player they have down low, actually two players down low right now, Stuckey and Stewart. A bunch of players continue to switch around. Very similar to the motion offense as a three ball goes on the way but does not go down. Wide open underneath but blocked is Caldwell. And I think that was Wagner again who touched it last. Stryker did. And you can hear the striker fans on our side of the gym pleading that that should be a foul. Yeah, I mean, she's a she's definitely an aggressive player. I mean, I like that they're letting them play. Good move by Marshall. The kick to the outside and the jumper is too strong. Wagner, the offensive board. Fairview needs a bucket here. And, well, that was a near turnover. That Miller had a wide open shot on the left side, just missed it. Good screen by Wagner, but it's stolen away. Good screen, better defense by Stewart. It's the fifth turnover for Fairview. So they're giving up baskets on the one end and turning the ball over on the other. That's not a good uh, situation. Now Stewart gets fouled. She was in a crowd of white jerseys, and we'll see who gets this call. It's That's going to be on Michelle Marshall. I don't know. Nope, they're not. Yeah, they did call it on Marshall. That's her second. You see third. And, you know, you look at their varsity lineup, they've only got eight players listed on their varsity roster, does Fairview. This free throw is good. Stewart now with five points. She leads all striker scores. She, Kirsten Klein will check in for Marshall. You know, the first
first free throws of the game, by the way, and the second one is good. So Stewart two for two on that trip to the line. And we'll get a quick substitution as Alyssa Blevins. Did they wave off the, the first one or something? Because the scoreboard does not show both made. I thought she, well, she definitely made both of them, but oh, now I'm they not did. sure. There it is. Now it Full court pressure again. I was going to say, I don't know if there was a lane violation or something that... I didn't see a call for a lane yeah. violation, but obviously they counted it, so... Stay down, stay down, stay down. And meanwhile, Fairview has yet to score since about the six and a half minute mark. Their last bucket came. They nearly got one there. That was, that was Klein who took the shot, but a good play by Wagner. Gets the loose ball and a foul. Seven oh one was the last time they made. That's on Blevins who missed the foul. It's her first as Fairview looks to stop the scoring drought. Short inbound but in a crowd and a jump ball. Jump ball and the arrow will give it back to. No, nope. that should be Fairview. Striker won the the tip and there hasn't been a jump ball since. I don't think they had the arrow correct. And that's tipped through the backcourt. It's going to be stolen away by Stewart. Or excuse me, Caldwell. And stolen right back. That was Rasika. Lob up the floor. Wagner looked like she might not be ready for it, but she puts it home. And Wagner's on the board for the first time. And more importantly, stops a scoring drought that went over five minutes. And Wagner, that's what she does. She hustles. She's down there and puts up eat what looks like an easy shot. Double team causes the block. Open out on the wing. That would have been a two had Myers shot it. Gave it up instead. This would be a three. That was tipped. That was tipped by Wagner and blocked. And going all the way to the basket and finishing is Kirsten Klein. A turnover leading to points for the Apaches. That's going to be on Blevins, and that's her second. She's got two off the bench. She'll come out. Stewart will check back in. 13-9 to nine to score. And that free throw no good. Keeps it at a four-point game. Record-wise, these are two evenly matched teams, seven and one on the season from both of them. That's nearly stolen. Cross-court feed to Caldwell, puts it up, no good. And a second chance for the Panthers. They don't cash in there, but they'll get another chance. A third opportunity in this possession with less than a minute to go. And you don't have the shot clock in high school basketball, so Stryker really doesn't have to operate that quickly here. In fact, if they choose, they could just simply dribble out for the final shot of the quarter. Baker is uh, alternating between coming in and playing defense and letting her go. It's Brittany Haynes with the basketball. And everybody spread out on the floor. Might be looking for an isolation play here, but the feed inside, they get the open bucket. And that's Stewart cashing in. Boy, that was patience on Brittany Haynes' part. And then to find the open Stewart, she had nobody around her. Here's Marshall, kicks it back outside. Rasika with an off-balance three, and that's an air ball. But a second chance coming. That went out of bounds off of Stewart. Well, she's in a one-on-one -on -one boxing out. But she just gave Fairview an extra possession. Fairview can hold for the final shot of the quarter. Got to get it in quick, though, and they finally do. Now they got to get a shot off quick down to two seconds. And they don't. So there you have it. 15-9 wow. the score. And Fairview started to make a bit of a run there toward the end, but Stryker makes it a 15-6 lead, or 15-9 lead, rather, over the Apaches. We'll be back for the start of the second quarter after this on the Golden Bear Sports Network. They say their strength in numbers, just one, and Brian, we have always it. taken pride in supporting our Golden Bear student-athletes in all of their sporting endeavors. 
The Bryan Athletic Boosters now have a chance for you to get into the game. If you're Brian Proud, it's time to become Brian Strong. Supporting our Bryan High School athlete. This is your chance to be part of the BHS sporting community. Talk to any board member today on how easy it is to join or contact us at 419-636-4536. Tonight's broadcast of Golden Bear Sports is proudly streamed by BMU Cable and High Speed Internet. BMU is your hometown local provider for digital HD cable and high speed internet. Call BMU today at 419-633-6100 or visit us on the web at cityofbryan.net. Go Bears from all of us at BMU. from three-point land. They're perfect from the foul line. Leading scorer is Courtney Stewart with eight points. I'll give you a fair views here in a second. Pass is tipped, but Stryker able to keep possession there. Fairview had a scoring drought that lasted over five minutes. Their first two buckets within the first minute of the game, but then took five minutes to score again. Didn't take long to score for Stryker. That's Stewart. Eight, she's, number 10. she's got 10, and the interesting thing about her is she uh, she has got double figures, and they've mostly been backdoor cuts. That's, That's going to be an good offensive good. foul. That's a good call. That was, uh, that was either Rasika or Mueller. It was Mueller. Riley Mueller. That's her first foul. Real quick for Fairview. Fairview shooting 57% from the field. They're one of two from the arc, behind the arc, and their leading scorer is Michelle Marshall with five. It's like a little 1 2 2 zone to start things out on this possession from Fairview. Stryker has one made three in this game. They're going to go for a second. They don't get it. Almost actually ricocheted back in, but it's going to be Fairview basketball. Haynes tried to take that one from outside. The zone gave it to her, but she missed it, and then the rebound went out of bounds. But look at Fer uh, Stryker putting on this press. And that's stolen away. That was too easy for Mackenzie Caldwell, but stolen right back. And the bucket doesn't go. That was in close, uncontested from Kendall Baker. slows it down across the timeline. They get it in the paint against that zone. And they're going to call travel. I think that's a good call. Courtney Stewart went one direction and then picked the foot up and went the other direction with that pass. Uh, taking a look at some rebounds, uh, Stryker with five total rebounds, three offensive, two defensive. Fairview with just one offensive rebound. Uh, and uh, seven turnovers for Fairview, four for Stryker. Right now an eight-point lead. For Stryker, good double team down low, nearly results in a turnover. Feet inside and a foul. That was Klein who took the shot. And they're going to call it on Stewart. That'll be her first, team fifth. That'll put uh, Klein to the line to shoot two. These would be Klein's first free throws of the game. Fairview, if I'm not mistaken, is 0 for 1 from the free throw line. Stryker is 2 for 2. And the first one is good. Well, Kirsten Klein is one of three Apaches who's already on the board. She misses the second. Give her three points on the game, but Wagner with the offensive board. And a mid-range jumper doesn't go. That was Mueller, who couldn't get it to go, and this may be over and back, and now it is. Well, Fairview has had problems with turnovers yep. for a good portion of this game. Eight of them so far. They don't have a single made field goal here two minutes into the second quarter. Had a five-minute scoring drought in the first quarter. It's not saying much at the college level, but here at, uh, well, that's not necessarily true, but at, at the college level, five minutes only encompasses a, fifth, a fourth of a period. Yep. Unless you're talking about girls. Long inbound. 
into the hands of Stuckey. They get it to Stuckey on the inside back, out for the three, and it is short. That was Grimm that missed the three. Long rebound came to Fairview. Grimm has the only made three of the game for striker. Wagner couldn't get it to go, but she'll go to the line. That's Stewart's second foul. Wagner's been rather quiet in this game. Well, she is an aggressive player, though, isn't she? She absolutely is. Gone after, gone after blocks, gone after rebounds on a number of occasions tonight. There's her first free throw of the game. Olivia Rasika back in. And the second free throw is no good. Two for three are the Apaches. Well, and again, a little late on the scoreboard change, yep. but we've got the updated score, 17-11. Fairview still doesn't have a made field goal here in this second half, the second quarter, rather. Stryker only has one made field goal, and that's stolen away by Rasika. Back up the floor to Baker. Pull-up jumper. It's good. Kendall Baker's on the board, and we're going to get a timeout by Steve Brown. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll take a break here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. BMU High Speed Internet is now cheaper than ever. Now just $30 a month, that's $100 a year in savings. Get it with BMU Extended Basic Cable for all your sports, movies, and reality shows, plus local programming, including high school sports and community events, not to mention a local help desk and support team for when you need them. Now for the fine print. We don't have any. No contracts or hidden fees. Call BMU today at 419-633-6100 or visit us on the web at cityofbryan.net. Hey, something to add to that. BMU Internet is getting even better starting January 1st. BMU Internet is offering local, local help desk support 24-7, 365. You know, those problems don't happen when it's... Help. You can call 419-633-0900 for BMU internet support anytime, any day, starting January 1st. So 17-13 the score right now. Stryker with a lead over Fairview and a 1-2-2 zone here by the Apaches. They used this late in the first quarter. They used it a whole lot. And that's into the backcourt. There's Wagner, the closest player to it. Oh. And she how got that bumped, but I don't know how that wasn't a foul. I certainly thought it was. And a drive and a bucket for Klein. As the Kirsten Klein with the, the uh, Euro step there. <laughs> it's a two-point game all of a sudden. Haynes trying to make a move. Contested three well off the mark, but an offensive rebound by Stuckey. And that pass is stolen away by Marshall. One-on-one -on -one to the glass, and a good job defensively by Haynes. And we get a foul on the inside. And I believe that's going to go against number 33, Caitlin Tingley. Nope, nope. it's going to go on Haynes. That's two for her. That's big for Stryker. And this is one and one, unless they called it a shooting foul. But no, it was one and one. So is this, this is uh, Rasisa at the line. Apaches have been struggling from the free throw line, and that continues. Two for four now after that miss. From the corner, here's a drive by Grimm, and she loses it, but a foul, and possibly a bailout foul. She got bailed. I was just going to say that, that she totally got bailed out on that one. It's going to be on Mueller. That's two. I thought that was good defense by Riley Mueller. 4 7 to go. Grimm at the line. If I'm not mistaken... Striker was two for two up until that last attempt. Now, now three for three. three. Yep. Kinsey Myers in the game. Two for two on that trip is Grimm. Well, here's the difference. Striker is four for four, and Fairview's only two for six. Whoa. A four-point lead. That looked dangerous. It looked really dangerous. Wagner hadn't yet gotten back across the line, but Fairview still with the ball, and they're going to keep possession. They're going to say Rasika wow. did not touch that one. That's interesting to me. It looked like it just went right off her hand. I, I thought so, too. 
They get it in quick. Stryker wasn't ready, and they don't get the bucket. Rasika was calling for that. That's stolen away by Wagner, and the bucket goes. Rasika, I believe, again got the bucket that time, and it was Rasisa. Yeah, that's her first two points of the game. She's been good on the defensive end, though. Zone defense here by the Apaches. Looks like they're trying to double the ball. And they're going to get a jump ball here, and that one going to give it back to Fairview. And now... Rather low scoring yep. second half here, but a two point game. They lob it inside to Wagner. She puts it home, and we're tied. And that's what she can do just by being taller than everyone else. She was able to reach over the defender and grab that ball out and just put it up. Wagner, six foot one. And we're going to get a foul down low on the penetration oh, I by think Glenn. Nope. I think we just said that she just stepped on the line out. So that's going to be Fairview ball. So quickly, the turnovers, it was 8-4. to four, uh, Fairview over uh, leading striker in the turnover margin. Now it's tied up at 8. Amazing how things can change. Yep. Open 3, and Marshall will take it, but couldn't knock it down, but the putback goes, and that's Rasisa. And that gives Fairview the lead. That's their first lead since it was 3-2 to two in the first minute of play. Wide open three on the other end is short, but an offensive board, and Stuckey brought it back out. Yep. She had the size advantage over everybody. I don't know why she didn't just put it up. Yeah, it didn't make any sense to me either. Myers missed the three. And back the other way comes Klein. And that's going to count. Oh. Plus the foul. So Klein made the, the bucket, and that foul is going to go on uh, Mackenzie Caldwell. And the striker fans did not like that one whatsoever. It definitely looked like early contact from my vantage point. I don't know about you, Chris. Yeah, I, but... I think you're right. But here's a chance at a three-point play, and Klein cannot hit the free throw. That has been a real struggle in this game for Fairview is the free seven. throw line. Two of seven. Open three for Haynes, but can't knock it down. They lob it down the floor. And a little trouble with the basketball there for Rasisa, but she puts it in anyway. Uh, check that Riley Mueller with the bucket. Her first of the night. Feet inside. Haynes can't put it home. Biggest lead for uh, Stryker, or Fairview right now, rather. But she'll get a foul. It's going to be on Rasisa. That's two on her. It's going to send Haynes to the line. She's got two points in the game tonight. Hasn't scored from the field. But she hits the first one. I should say hasn't scored from the free throw line. We were looking at a 10 nothing run just before that free yep. throw was made. Second one good. But now it's a four-point game, less than two to play. Remember, Fairview had scoring droughts in both of the first two quarters. They had the one-on-one -on -one matchup down low with Klein, but moving everybody around right now. man-to-man -man defense by Stryker. Loose ball, and Marshall's able to recover. Oh, nice move. Rasisa off glass and good. Well, she's having herself a nice game. She is. She's got six points, and that was a beautiful move. She was out beyond the arc. They couldn't find her there, so she just made a little cut, and they found her in stride for the bucket. 3-2 zone here by the Apaches. Caldwell puts it on the deck. Open three. And it's off the side of the backboard and ripped away by Marshall. One on three. And here comes Haynes the other way. I think she actually inadvertently kicked the ball, but that bucket's going to count. 
It's a huge bucket as far as striker is concerned. Yep. That's traveling. There is no doubt about that. Now, it's a four-point ball game, and Stryker's going to have the chance to hold for the last shot here or push it a little bit and try to get it tied up. Got a chance if you do hold for the last shot, you can make this a one-possession game. As Haynes brings the ball across the timeline. Less than 30 seconds to play in the game. Wagner on Haynes all the way. Double team. Going for the steal. And we're uh, going to get a foul. That's another bailout foul right there. They call this one on Kendall Baker. A push. And that's not good because that puts him to the line with a uh, one and one. That was the eighth team foul against Fairview. And it comes with 14.5 seconds left to go in this game. And in, Haynes, this, uh, in this half, rather. And Haynes just went 2 2 from the line. So basically, you're giving her uncontested points right here. It's the first one. Second one is good. Now Fairview will get the last shot, but Stryker's going to press. That's eight points in the game for Haynes. As Marshall gets it across the timeline, seven seconds to go. Can Fairview get something off before the half ends? They do, but it doesn't go. Back out, got to hurry, and that doesn't go for Marshall. She got it off, but couldn't get it to go. And it's 27-25 at halftime. Fairview with the lead over Stryker. Wow. Second half coming your way in moments, but for now, we will take a break and come back with a first half recap here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. It's pretty obvious that there is a huge inventory of trailers at Jason Deach Trailer Sales in Edgerton. But what you can't see is how many parts they have available. Axles, brakes, doors, fenders, hitches, hinges, electrical, lighting, suspensions, tie-downs, toolboxes, tires, and wheels. If it's a part you need for your trailer, you can get it online or in person at Jason Deach Trailer Sales on the east side of Edgerton. Here at the Williams County Veterans Service Office, our mission is plain and simple. We are here to serve our local Williams County veterans and their dependents. We are staffed with trained service officers who have the compassion and understanding to assist their fellow veterans in obtaining all federal and state benefits that they have earned. Additionally, we provide emergency financial assistance and transportation to VA medical centers. So if you're a veteran or a dependent of a veteran, stop in today and see how we can help you at the Williams County Veterans Service Office. The Williams County Veterans Service Office. Our mission is plain and simple. We are keeping children safe on Ohio school buses is a priority for the Ohio State Highway Patrol. This is Lieutenant Bob Ashenfelder of the Defiance Post. Safety on the roadway is a shared responsibility. Even though motorists are required to stop as a safety measure, children should always look both ways before crossing the street and remain alert to any sudden traffic changes. Together, we can make this a safe school year. It's been said a million times, there's nothing in the world more important than family. We understand that at Overland Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory. Our entire staff is like family to us. They are some of the most caring, thoughtful, and dedicated people in our industry. In fact, our newest members are part of my family. When the time comes for your family to say goodbye, remember our family. Overland Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory in Bryan, Sherwood, West Unity, and Hampton. Welcome back, everyone. It is 27 to 25. Fairview leading striker at halftime on your main stop scoreboard. Bagged off along with Chris Malenga. A half of runs is basically, I think, how you would describe the first half. Absolutely. Fairview went in the first half, first quarter, almost seven minutes without getting a bucket. And then in the second quarter, same thing. And then all of a sudden, uh, striker went cold, and we have a two-point ball game. If you had told me beginning of the second quarter, the way Fairview was playing, that they would be leading this game, I would have been shocked because they... Uh, 
they just were not doing things right. And then all of a sudden, a little momentum shift, and you had a couple of good buckets, and uh, there we go with a Fairview lead. So you want to look at some stats, Dad? Absolutely. Let's start out with the uh, Panthers of Stryker. Uh, Stryker's now shooting 42% from the field. They're 8 of 19. They are 63% from inside the three-point arc. They're one of eight from outside the arc, and they're eight of eight from the foul line, which is pretty impressive, and that's kind of the difference in this game right now. They have seven total rebounds, four offensive, three defensive, one block, and 12 turnovers. Their leading uh, scorer is Courtney Stewart. She has 10 points. She's four of six from the field, two of two from the line. Brittany Haynes has eight points. She is two of five from the field, four of four from the line. Emma Grimm is, has five points. She's one of three from the field and two of two from the line. Mackenzie Caldwell has two points. She is just one of four from the field. Taking a look at the uh, Fairview Apache score, uh, they have a significantly less amount of people uh, on their roster to look at, but they are 52% from the field, 12 of 23. They are 11 of 20 from inside the three-point arc. They're 1 of 3 from outside. They're an abysmal 2 of 7 from the foul line. They have 8 rebounds, 5 offensive, 3 defensive, 3 steals, 3 blocks, and 9 turnovers. Their leading scorer is Kirsten Klein, who has 7 points. She's 3 of 4 uh, from the field, 1 of 4 from the line. Olivia Racisa is 3 of 6 from the field and 0 of 1 from the foul line with 6 points. Mercedes Wagner, a quiet five points. She is two of three from the field, one of two from the foul line. Michelle Marshall has five points. She is two of four from the field, one of two from the three-point line. Kendall Baker, one of two with two points. And Riley Miller, one of two, or one of four for two points. And, and there you have it. That's all the scoring that there was. Taking a look at some quick comparisons. Um, turnovers. Uh, Fairview has nine. Stryker has 12 uh, fouls. Um, nobody was in real foul trouble. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Racisa has two fouls. Mueller has two fouls. Marshall has two fouls for Fairview. Stryker's side, the only one in trouble. Brittany Haynes has two. And Courtney Stewart has two. And Calista Blevins, who comes in off the bench, also has two. And, and that's it as far as foul trouble as we head into the second half of play. You mentioned Stryker has more turnovers than Fairview. But early on in the game, it was Fairview who was having trouble keeping control of the basketball and turning the ball over. Yep. Yeah, absolutely was and you know that just uh just shows you the way the way that uh the the game is of streaks as you said it kind of just changes momentum shifts back and forth you know we talked about it in the top of the telecast that these teams are on a christmas break you know they've they've had the holiday uh you know and they've been off school and so things are not like they are in the regular season where you're practicing every day you're in school every day you're in a routine and you know a little knock a little bit of rust stuff and it, it kind of shows uh, how you start the game. 27-25 on your main stop scoreboard. We are at halftime here in Bryan High School. Remember, the winner of this game will take on the winner of the game between Bryan versus Paulding. Bryan versus Paulding, that game will be right after this game. The championship game of this holiday classic will take place tomorrow. Scheduled to be played at 7.30 with the consolation game right before it at 6 o'clock. We'll take a break and come back for the start of the second half. You are watching the Golden Bears Sports Network. Well, we are back here ready for the start of the second half between Stryker and Fairview, this first game of the Holiday Classic in Brian. Brian and, Paulding, the Brian and Paulding to follow as soon as this one is done. It'll be about a 20-minute break between games. That golf along with Chris Malinga. And again, a, a change of momentum basically to start the second quarter allowed Fairview to get back into this game. Actually had a 10-0 run at one. Yeah, game. absolutely. And, you know, Fairview is shooting uh, 11 of 20 from the field. Stryker is just 7 of 11. I'm sorry, eight of, Stryker is 8 of 19. Fairview is 12 of 23. Um, and uh, free throws, that's the big difference in this one in my mind. Stryker is 8 of 8 and Fairview just 2 of 7. Brittany Hayes is going to bring it up the timeline. Another zone to start out from Fairview. They started to use that zone late in the first half a little bit more frequently. And that three is good. It rattles home from Emma Grimm. I believe she had the only made three of the game in the first half for Stryker. She's got eight points now. And that's the kind of how they started. The lead, meanwhile, for Stryker. But another open three on the other end. That's in and out. Putback doesn't go. And the rebound eventually pulled down, but stolen right back by the Apaches. Marshall, no foul call there. Looked like contact. And called 
Caldwell will get it up across the timeline. Fairview back in that zone again, and that's tipped into the backcourt. Kendall Baker can't finish. There's Wagner, though, for the footback. Nice job by Wagner. Again, she's just kind of there. Give her an open look underneath. She's going to make it. And the lead right back, meanwhile, to Fairview. Started this half with the lead. Now they get it back. That one in and out from Grimm. And the rebound eventually pulled down by Mueller. Marshall was well defended there by Haynes. Open three, Baker, in and out. That one was halfway down. Yes, it was. Here's Haynes up the floor again. Has it stolen away? That's Baker. Finds Wagner backing in. No, off the glass, but she gets her own miss. Can't get the roll there. And we're going to have a foul or maybe a jump ball. And it is a jump ball. Session arrow should give it back to Fairview. We've only had three jump balls in this game. That is an uh, interesting turn of events there because uh, Fairview had two steals, back-to-back -back steals by Baker. Three from the top of the key, and that's an air ball. And that was Baker as well. Only had one made three in the game for Fairview. That was Racisa, yep, Olivia one. Racisa. They're one of six. Had three made threes as a whole between the two teams. And a one-point lead right now for Fairview. That one no good. That was Grimm trying again. Nice rebound by Mueller going the other way. Trying to push it up the floor, but defenders close in. From the free throw line, Marshall drains it. That was a beautiful shot. Marshall had two defenders in front of her. She stopped and popped right at the foul line. 31-28 Fairview. Here's Caldwell. Has to slow it down back up top. And the three is good by Courtney Stewart. Nice job by Stewart. She now has 13. We got a tie game, 31 apiece. And that ball gets away. And finally Marshall recovered. Got away with a potential foul right there, too. Wagner recovered the loose ball. You wait the screen, and there it is. Tipped around and eventually stolen. Anna Stuckey. A fine defensive play that was. She just stuck with it. Three ball from the wing, no good. Offensive rebound by Stuckey. Second chance and a foul. Emma Grimm headed to the line. We'll see who they give the foul to. That's going to be on Marshall. That'll be three on her. And I believe she's the first player to get into any substantial foul trouble in this game. Comes with 4.41 to go. Grimm is now three of three from the foul line. Kirsten Klein into the game for the Apaches. And Brian and Paulding set to play after these two are done, but the second free throw is good. Winner of this game plays in the championship round tomorrow. Set to start at 7.30. Three ball no. Racisa took that one. And it remains a two-point lead for the Panthers. Sookie with another good rebound. Knocked away. That's going to be a foul on Wagner. That'll be her first. That'll send Stewart to the line. And her first free throw is good. She's now 5 of 5 from the line pad. Far better free throw shooting day for the Panthers than it Absolutely. has for the they're, Apaches. They're uh, 11 of 11 right now. Second one, no good. I jinxed him. And Wagner nearly lost it. To the corner. Marshall goes with the ball fake instead of the three pointer. She had it if she wanted it. But a defender close by as well. Four on the game clock in this third quarter on your main stop scoreboard. 
Zone defense here by the Panthers. They get it up top. Much better defense in the second half for the Stryker Panthers. Lead it by three on the main stop scoreboard, and well, that was going to be a turnover no matter what happened. Yep, absolutely. Cisa could, just couldn't hold on to it. Tried to save it, but threw it right in the hands of Stuckey. And it's a three-point game still. Fake off the three. Oh, what a move. And bucket goes for Grimm. That was a nice move. She had a three. She dribbled in, made a little ball fake, head fake. and Grimm was one of the seniors who Steve Brown was hoping to get quite a bit of production out of. He's gotten quite a bit of production out of her tonight, 12 points. Offensive, nope, excuse me, defensive rebound. It was King, Kinsey Myers and, and had a foul, I think. That's gonna be Wagner's second foul. Three ten to go on your main stop scoreboard. Three team fouls already for Fairview here in the second half. None so far for Stryker. Here's Grimm, pulls up for three, no good. That was not a good miss for her. Get it up the floor, and that's gonna be an offensive foul on Racisa. That's three on her. I don't know about that one there, Thad. It looked like she kind of slowed her momentum before she made the contact. Yeah. Still just a five-point game with a lot of basketball to be played. And these two teams have had over a week off since their last game. As Fairview gets the rebound, that was Mueller. Fairview hasn't played in 10 days, and that's going to go into the backcourt. Well, whether you haven't played in 10 days or not, you just can't have stuff like that. Yeah, 12 turnovers for Fairview now. I'm going to say Fairview hasn't played in 10 days. Stryker hasn't played in eight days. And obviously, you've got uh, you had the Christmas holiday just recently. So, I mean, you're going to have uh, you're going to have players a little bit rusty, but you're now in the second half, though, of a big basketball game. You need to win. Absolutely, and you can't have silly turnovers like traveling. Yeah. That was Caldwell called for traveling there. A five-point lead, meanwhile, for the Panthers. Up to the top of the key, this is Baker. Nearly turned over. Wow. Open three, and Marshall will take it, but can't knock it down. That has not been a strong suit for Fairview. And Caldwell wasn't ready for the pass. Stryker avoids the turnover, but that was, that looked like disaster waiting to yeah, happen. Absolutely. Count the basket. Emma Grimm. Foul's going to be on Racisa. That'll be her fourth. We have a timeout, meanwhile. I believe it was a full timeout. Now here's what's interesting, Thad. Fairview has five team fouls already. Stryker has none. Okay, so here we are in the second half. So two more fouls, and Stryker is shooting. Stryker is 11 of 12 from the foul line. So And Fairview's been struggling to hit their free throws. Right, and so you're going to be into a situation where, you know, you're going to start fouling. You're going to put them in the line every time, and they've been hitting free throws. So it's not a good situation right now for Fairview. They need to stop the bleeding. They need to get some points, and they need to get this back. And I do want to remind you, you're watching the Holiday Classic, the 16th annual Holiday Classic on the Golden Bear Sports Network, BMU TV, BrianSports.com, and WQCT Brian. Get our legal ID in there while we're in the timeout. I believe in last year's uh, Holiday Classic, Mercedes Wagner was one of the... Uh... Well, they actually, the all-tournament team was Kenda Schrader, who is gone. Um, and Fairview's, our strikers, Haley Dorman was also, so those two are both gone. But I'm telling you what, so far there's a lot of people that on both sides, you know, Courtney Stewart's got 14 points, Emma Grimm has 14 points. I mean, those two right there for striker have just 
been doing a nice job. They've got all but 10 points of Stryker's 38 point total. That all tournament team featured two players from Bryan. And a free throw there is good to complete the three point play for Emma Grimm. She's got 15 points and leads all scorers. Fairview does not have a single player in double figures just yet. Nope, they got three players at seven. Got to get a couple of buckets here before this thing gets away from them. Got a minute and a half left to go in this third quarter. They swing it around the timeline. Kick back to the outside from Marshall. A lot of time being taken off the clock here. Wagner kicks it back out. And that's stolen away. It's Stuckey who takes it away. Haynes slows it down. Loose ball. Picked up by Stryker. Baseline drive by Grimm, and that stayed in bounds. Did it go off of Stryker? It did. I tell you what, uh, Emma Grimm is a really good basketball player. She is good underneath. She's good at the point position, and she just has a way of fooling the defender and going a different way than the defender is expecting. That time it wasn't a positive play for a striker, but every other time she's touching the ball, it's a it's a good situation. Eight point lead for striker in the closing seconds of this third quarter. Now Fairview can hold for the final shot of the half, but down two possessions might not be so keen to do that. But they're going to get the foul here. Yeah, I, I think that's a good foul. That's going to be on Stuckey. That's her first. That'll put Wagner a line to shoot two. Wagner is one of two from the line going into this one. And not able to connect on the first one. That continues to be a problem. Two of eight now for Fairview from the line. That, by the way, was the first team foul in this half against the Panthers. Oh, for two. Stuckey the rebound, and now Stryker. I would not be surprised if they were to hold for the final shot of the quarter here. I tell you what, I'd chuck a three and put a dagger in it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. That'd make it an 11-point game. Down to 15 to go in the hat, in the quarter, rather. Haynes gets the screen from Stuckey, gets it to her. Into the lane. Got to get a shot off, and they do, but it's no good. They just barely got it off. That was Stewart who put it up, and it remains an eight-point game. Tell you what, that was a, you want to hear an interesting stat? 14 for Stryker, four for Fairview in the third quarter. That's definitely an interesting stat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Stryker led 15-9 to nine at the end of the first, and then uh, Fairview outscored him 18-10 in the second. So that was 27-25 uh, at the half and then in the third quarter, holding Fairview to just four points and while scoring 14 of your own. That's amazing. 39-31 on the main stop scoreboard. We'll be back for the start of the fourth quarter after this break on the Golden Bear Sports Network. It's pretty obvious that there is a huge inventory of trailers at Jason Deach Trailer Sales in Edgerton. But what you can't see is how many parts they have available. Axles, brakes, doors, fenders, hitches, hinges, electrical, lighting, suspensions, tie-downs, toolboxes, tires, and wheels. If it's a part you need for your trailer, you can get it online or in person at Jason Deach Trailer Sales on the east side of Edgerton. Back here for the start of the fourth quarter. Stryker leads Fairview 39-31. Stryker will have the ball to start this fourth quarter. And they outscored Fairview 14-4 in that third quarter. Had a hard time getting it in. They finally did. It was about at a four and a half count. <laughs> Screen down low, or along the uh, three-point line, rather. That shot doesn't go. That was Grimm. She's had a solid performance tonight, but Wagner rips it away. Wagner looking to push. Spins in, and they get the foul call. I'm not sure that was an all-ball. Well, they had their both hands on the ball. I don't know if there's any contact there. 
But when you look at fouls, I know you're not trying to keep things even, but five to one. That's going to be three on Haynes, though. I didn't think it was Haynes that they even called the foul on. Well, Wagner able to hit the first free throw. She's got eight points total tonight. And she's now two for four from the charity stripe. Second one, no good. I don't think the uh, Apaches have had a two for two, for two possession in this not. game. There are three of 11. This is Grimm, guarded one on one. Haynes trying to make a move, instead has to kick it to the corner. Seems to me that Fairview has had the most success when they've had the zone with the double team of the ball. I don't know why they went away from that. Stuckey with the miss there, so Baker comes down with the board, so a chance to cut into this lead. And here's Baker pushing quick down the floor. But a turnover by the Apaches. Stewart has it blocked, no foul, and they'll play on. One-on-one, -on -one, that's a blocking foul. Oh, see, that one I'm not sure about. That definitely looked like an elbow. I thought they were going to call that a charge. Yeah, I, I think that was uh, that was not a good foul. I have no rooting interest in this game, and, I, you know, that one, that's tough. So she's going to have to sit because she's got four now. That'll bring up Kinsey Myers, bringing Kinsey Myers. Still a seven-point game, and a bailout foul if you want to, but another chance for the Apaches, but they don't cash in. 17 turnovers now for Fairview. And here goes Grimm down the baseline, puts it home. Emma Grimm. What a night she's had, 17 points in the game. And they call that foul on Klein. That would be her first. I tell you what, how many three traditional three-point plays has she had? It's had to be like three or four. Yeah, it's, that's impressive. And a chance to get the lead to double digits if she can sink this free throw. She doesn't. And here's Wagner up the floor. Double team, gets it off, no. And that's out of bounds, and Fairview's going to take over, excuse me, Stryker is going to take over. Forty-one, thirty-two, and if I had told you these two teams were tied in turnovers, would you believe it? I wouldn't believe it. If I weren't watching this game, I wouldn't. Tough shot off class, no good. And now the Apaches will come the other way. This is Rasika, Rasisa, I beg your pardon. Feet inside, that's Rasisa again with the ball. Mueller knocks down a three. That is huge. That is very big. Makes Mueller a six now with point five. Game. Six point game and a little bit of pressure put on there, but it's just Baker helping in the front court. I'm telling you, the zone with the double team ball seemed to work. I don't know why they went away from it. Not doing it here, not yet. Stewart gets double teamed. Oh, that, huh. that looked like a walk. Yeah, something. Offensive rebound. Stuckey can't put it home. And a foul. And it's going to be a loose ball foul. But who's it against? It's going to be one and one. I think is what the official is signaling. That's going to be a third on Wagner. Wagner entered the third quarter with zero fouls. And in the second half, she's got three of the seven. Stuckey. That puts Stuckey to the line to shoot. One and one. And she misses the front end, but she gets the offensive board. Stewart, and she got fouled. Oh. That was a late call. Late call is right. That's going to be on Riley Mueller. That'll be three on her. She's the fourth Fairview Apache to reach three fouls or more with 5.08 to go. Stewart able to knock down the first. They're going to sub, but they're going to sub for the shooter. 
One for two. And another offensive rebound. Stewart gets fouled again. So she'll get another chance. That's going to be on Wagner, I think. That's on Wagner. That's four. Wow. That wow. is on Wagner. Free throw. Well, all of a sudden, the striker who was shooting so well. They were 11 strike. 11. They're now 12 of uh, 18. Missed seven of their last eight. Second one, though, is good. So, when all said and done, Courtney Stewart gets two points out of that possession by going two for four from the free throw line. Yeah. Not one that you see very often. Five minutes to go in this one. And an eight-point lead for Stryker. I tell Bucket you what. Go. That was Wagner. I tell you what. The, the fouls are 9-3. Wagner just got killed. And she's limping. She sure is. She's not 100%. And she has to the there was line. no whistle there whatsoever. I just don't get it. I mean, that has changed the complexion of this game. The foul. Wow. It's the 30-second timeout called by Steve Brown. Wow. So I, hopefully Wagner's okay. She's sitting on the bench now. Well, she's got four fouls as well, so imagine she'll be looked at by the trainer. But with the time, with the time we have left, even if you do take her out, you're going to want to get her back in if she's yeah. healthy as soon as possible. Yeah, I just... I don't know. I just don't... I, I, you know, I'm not criticizing the officiating again. I have no rooting interest in this game. But, you know... Nine to three in fouls, and I don't think one team's playing a lot more aggressively than the other. You know what I mean? Not so, really. I don't know. It's it's just interesting to me. I mean, I can't believe there was no nothing whistled there when Wagner hit the deck. You get it into Haynes. Waits for a screen. Doesn't really get one. Grim looking to drive instead backs it out and that's thrown right into traffic and picked up by Marshall but stolen right back and we're going to get a jump ball that will give it back to, to Fairview still some time they can cut into this lead though down just 8 with 426 to go on your main stop score they've done it before Score in this game is Emma Graham with 17 points. Again, fairly nobody in double digits. Their highest scorer tonight is Mercedes Wagner, but there's a three from Marshall. Nope, check that. Recisa. That gives her nine points. We got a five point game. Feet inside. Stuckey puts it home. Yeah, uh, they're playing an outside defense and they left her wide open underneath. Stuckey with her first points of the night. Here's a baseline drive. Open three, Racisa puts it home. Now she goes into double digits, and that's going to be something that Stryker's going to have to defend. So I don't know if that's going to open up the middle more. I believe she has Fairview. I believe she has back-to-back -back threes now. And that's out of bounds. It's going to go... I believe back to oh. Fairview. Are they giving that to Stryker? I think they're going to call a foul. They are. Yep, they called it on Baker. Oh, my goodness. Kendall Baker, the 10th team foul. Oh, my goodness. I, don't, I didn't think I saw anything there. But here's the free throw. It's good by Courtney Stewart. And her last three points have come from the charity stripe. She's got 17 total. Wagner's back in. But one for two this time. And Wagner comes down with the board. Looks to push quick up the floor. Open three. Racisa will take it. Oh! Bent and off the rim. <laughs> wow. That's 15. That's nine straight points for her. All My threes. goodness. And a two-point game. Fairview working their way back into this thing. Now, 
The free throw shooting has been an advantage for, for Stryker. But that may not matter when this one's all said and done as Fairview now has a chance to tie. A chance to tie or take the lead. Marshall off the shot fake. Draws some contact and a foul, but again, the struggle for Fairview has been at the free throw line. Can they get a couple to fall here? That will be on Stewart. That's her third. Team fourth. Wagner is... First one doesn't fall. Uh, Marshall, is, she has not taken a foul shot. And as a team, we've only three made free throws for Fairview tonight. Yep. That one rattles out. A chance to tie the game and two free throws left off the board. Stewart guarded well. Grimm leaning in, and a block by Wagner, and she comes up the floor and draws some contact. She, she got lucky right there. She put a forearm out as she was crossing the line. It's, it's interesting that they gave that to Stewart. She has four. Wagner definitely... Uh, I didn't see Wagner absorb a whole lot of contact. She, she, she made a lot of contact. That's just the way she plays, though. She just plays hard. Oh, nice defensive play there by Caldwell. Knocked it away from Wagner. But Wagner has the size advantage between those two. Yep. And Caldwell still able to make the play. Grimm backs it out. And gets curled around by the defender and loses the ball. Poked out from behind, and that's going to stay with Fairview. Striker fans are not happy about that one. Looked like maybe there could have easily been a foul there. Yeah, there could have been on Baker. I don't know. It seems like the ticky-tack fouls are getting called and the hard contact isn't getting called. I just don't, I don't understand it. Less than two to go. Open three. Baker can't put it home. That would have given Fairview the lead. A gritty performance by both schools. Good move on the inside, but Wagner can't finish. Stuckey rips away the rebound. A minute and a half to go in this one, and a two-point lead for Stryker. Timeout taken by Stryker. Yep, he wants, minute 25. he wants to set things up. It's going to be a full timeout, so we should probably take it with him. But Stryker leading 46-44. Here at the Williams County Veterans Service Office, our mission is plain and simple. We are here to serve our local Williams County veterans and their dependents. We are staffed with trained service officers who have the compassion and understanding to assist their fellow veterans in obtaining all federal and state benefits that they have earned. Additionally, we provide emergency financial assistance and transportation to VA medical centers. So if you're a veteran or a dependent of a veteran, stop in today and see how we can help you at the Williams County Veterans Service Office. The hands-on training and education at Northwest State opens doors for good paying career opportunities with great local manufacturers. That helps me, my family, and my community. Back here at Bryan High School, this is the first game of the Holiday Classic. Paulding and Bryan will be set to play next. Right now, Stryker leading Fairview 46-44 on the main stop scoreboard. There's Paulding on the far side of the gymnasium. You can't see him on your screen, but they're over there on the far, far side of the gymnasium to our left. Again, Stryker has the four count to get it in. And to Haynes, she gets it across the timeline. The key is here if you're Fairview. Oh, Lake Mueller Ruby stole it. Foul. Mueller going for the turnover. And is that going to be a five-second count or another timeout? timeout? Full timeout again. And we'll take it with them here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. Some people say that Bob, Stan, and Santa might be the same guy. Just like Santa, Bob makes people really happy. <laughs> The hands-on training and education at Northwest State opens doors for good paying career opportunities with great local manufacturers. That helps me, my family, and my community. 
Some people say that Bob, Stan, and Santa might be the same guy. Just like Santa, Bob makes people really happy when he hands them the keys to their new Ford car or truck. Both are jolly guys who love kids and cookies. Plus, when was the last time you saw Bob and Santa in the same place at the same time? He's got a point. If a new Ford or Lincoln is in your holiday plans, come see Santa, uh, I mean, Bob Sand at Brian Ford Lincoln. Well, there's the Brian Golden Bears waiting for the second game of this doubleheader. They'll be taking on Paulding when this one is all said and done. Minute 12 left to go in this one between Fairview and Stryker, and again, they take some time to get it in. That's knocked to the backcourt. And they're going to say touch last by Fairview. Yeah, I'll tell you what, one thing Fairview has done really well is contest inbounds. They get it into Stuckey, and she'll dribble backwards there. And they get the foul call. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that was, though. Yeah, I really don't know. That's going to be on 34, Riley Mueller. That'll be her fourth. Miller becomes the fourth player for Fairview to reach four fouls. Nobody's I, fouled out yet. I'm guessing that that was, uh, I don't know why she dribbled backwards, but that's a good foul. Save some clock. That'll pad the lead as Stuckey gets the first of two free throws. She's now one of two. Only three points in the game for Stuckey. Two for two on this trip. Four points total. As we approach the final minute of play here in Bryant. And one more game to go after this one. It's Bryant versus Paulding. That's tipped in the air and taken away. Courtney Stewart, and we get a foul. That's going to be Mueller's fifth foul, I think. She'll become the first player to foul out. They do call it on Mueller. So now Stewart will go to the line. And again, try to pad this lead with less than a minute to go. But the Apaches still with a little bit of time. Timeout called by the Apaches. It's a full timeout. And we'll take it with them here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. For over 40 years, Bryan, Ohio has been home to the only import vehicle repair specialist in Northwest Ohio, Suburban Auto. Whether it's an Asian or European vehicle, Suburban has the knowledge and experience to keep your import or domestic car running strong. Do you have a hybrid vehicle that's acting up? Suburban is your one-stop hybrid repair shop. Don't be fooled by the one-size-fits-all repair shops. There is no substitute for experience. Come see the import repair pros, Suburban Auto. As the baby boomer generation tires of traditional send-offs, Funerals are becoming increasingly more personalized. People are pre-planning their own remembrance gathering. Pre-planning is easy and will pay off both emotionally and financially for you and your family. Plus allows you more control over your last hurrah. At Krill Funeral Service, we're not just funeral directors. We are experts at helping hearts heal. The, there's Paulding waiting to play the second game of this doubleheader in the Holiday Classic. They'll be playing Brian after this game between Stryker and Fairview is all said and done, and Stewart misses the first free throw. She's got 17 points, and early on in this game, Stryker had been shooting so well from the free throw line. Most of the second half, they've shot it well from the charity stripe as well. That second free throw goes. And 18 points for Courtney Stewart. Here's Baker along the baseline, somehow finds Wagner. That was a tough window. And the three ball goes. That's Kristen Klein. Fairview's going to take a full timeout. Well, we'll stay with you for this one. Well, that bucket by Klein is just huge as it gets it down to a two point game. Yep, and and it'll be interesting to see because you don't have the shot clock in high school basketball, so it'll be interesting to see if. Stryker tries to hold for the final shot, maybe even force uh, Fairview to foul. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's kind of, you know, they could hold, they could, they have to inbound. They've had trouble inbounding. So if I'm Stryker, I, I uh, try to inbound quick, and if I'm Fairview, I try to prevent that inbound because that's been the, probably the, the second half their worst thing. They've gotten very deep into the five count. 
So, I mean, Fairview needs a, a miracle here with the uh, a turnover. I don't know that you want to send a team that, well, I mean, they're, they've really dropped off. They were 11 for 11, and since they've gone, uh, they've gone 7 for uh, 15 the rest of the way. So they're now 18 to 26. Just about to get them back out on the court here, 49-47. And they're not going to, it looks like they might not contest the inbound. At least put anybody at the, at the, the inbound here. Somebody breaks free, though. They do bring pressure, though. Didn't look like they would initially, but eventually they did. And Stewart gets it across the oh. timeline. And now seconds ticking off the clock. We've got less than 30 to go. And that looked like it was going to be a foul they for sure. Whistled, they whistled Fairview the whole game, and now Fairview's trying to foul. They don't get a whistle. That was Kirsten Klein who finally did get called for one. <laughs> Not that it matters. That's her second. 13 team fouls for Fairview. Stryker has five here in the second half. 21.6, and if Grimm hits both of these free throws, she hits the first. She hits the second one. You gotta believe that Fairview is gonna be hurrying up the floor here for a quick bucket. Yep. Two for two. They do hurry. It's Marshall up the floor. Not gonna go for the three just yet. They gotta get something off. Only 12 on the clock. Three ball on the way. It's good. Wow. And now they call timeout with 7.1 to go. And that was Rasisa. Yep, that's uh, 18 now on the night for her. She has 18, Klein has 10. And that's four threes for Rasisa in a, what is now a one-point game. But again, just seven seconds on the clock. You give yourself a chance with yeah. that three-pointer, but you're going to have to foul pretty quickly. Well, you talk about a quick bucket. I mean, they they were, I don't know if that was the plan or what, but they moved that ball around until she got open and tucked the three. So I don't know what the plan was. I, was it nobody wanted to take it or they wanted to get it to her? I don't know. But they did a nice job. And again, they have to contest this inbound. I say you put Mercedes Wagner right on, on the inbounder. But again, they're not going to do that, which I'm not entirely sure is the wise move. It's going to be Stu Stewart to put it in play. They've got Wagner on Stuckey. The timeout timer is. They're just going to wait for the timeout up. clock to run down. Uh, it sets back. 7.1 to go on your main stop scoreboard. Maybe the reason they're not putting anybody on her is because she gets to run the floor. Again, they're leaving they're leaving Haynes wide open. Quick inbound. Going to have to foul quick. They finally do. And that's if gonna, that's on Wagner, that's going to be her fifth. I think that'll be five on her. Both Wagner and I believe Mueller as well have fouled out in this yep. one. 3.8 to go. That puts Grimm to the line to shoot. And Grimm is, right now, she is 7 of 8 from the foul line. She hits both of these. Fairview's going to need the quickest three that they could probably hope for. Yep. Doesn't necessarily have to be a half-court heave, but first one's good. Wasn't as pretty as her other seven makes. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe she goes for the miss. Here yeah, that's what I was just going to say. That's what I was just going to say. And now, you know, interestingly enough, Fairview called that timeout, and then, you know, she may not have come up with that one on her own. But now, sure, you know, Coach Brown is definitely saying something potentially about that. You know what I mean? And then that called the timeout. Then I don't think she might have thought of that. Probably not. And uh, you know, Coach Zedike. Trying to figure out what probably what to do if it does if she does miss it, but it's it's going to be very little time to get the ball up the floor yep. no matter what. Yep, absolutely. I don't know who has any time. I guess uh, Fairview. I think Fairview no just used it last. Striker has one left. So one more free throw for Grimm, and she's got 20 points in the game. 
the only player to reach that mark in this matchup. Twenty for Grimm, seventeen for Stewart. It's up. She missed it. And now time will start to tick away. Got to get something off. And they're not going to. Wow. Striker wins this one 50. 52 to 50. Wow, that was a good game. That was a really good game. Coming all the way down to the wire, but it's Stryker who gets the W. They'll improve to 8 and 1 on the season. Wow. Well, we'll take a quick break. Come back with a little post game recap here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. They say there is strength in numbers. In Brian, we have always taken pride in supporting our Golden Bear student athletes in all of their sporting endeavors. The Brian Athletic Boosters now have a chance for you to get into the game. If you're Brian proud, it's time to become Brian strong. Whether you were a BHS athlete, are raising a BHS athlete, or just love supporting our Brian High School athlete, this is your chance to be part of the BHS sporting community. Talk to any board member today on how easy it is to join or contact us at 419-636-4536. It's been said a million times, there's nothing in the world more important than family. We understand that at Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory. Our entire staff is like family to us. They are some of the most caring, thoughtful, and dedicated people in our industry. In fact, our newest members are part of my family. When the time comes for your family to say goodbye, remember our family, Oberlin Turnbull Funeral Home and Crematory in Bryan, Sherwood, West Unity, and Hamilton. Tonight's broadcast of Golden Bear Sports is proudly streamed by BMU Cable and High Speed Internet. BMU is your hometown local provider for digital HD cable and high speed internet. Call BMU today at 419-633-6100 or visit us on the web at cityofbryan.net. Go Bears from all of us at BMU. Last year, over 390 people in Ohio were killed because someone chose to get behind the wheel impaired. This is Lieutenant Bob Ashenfelder of the Ohio State Highway Patrol's Defiance Post. As part of the patrol's ongoing effort to contribute to a safer Ohio, Troopers will continue an increased focus on impaired driving arrests in 2018. But we can't fight this battle on our own. We need your commitment to... Back on the Gold Bear Sports Network, there's Dad with Coach. Welcome back to Bryan High School. I'm Thad Goff here with Steve Brown, the winning head coach from our first game tonight at the Holiday Classic. Well, Coach, that was a gritty performance for your for, for your striker players. Yeah, that's what I just told uh, Fairview coaching staff. That's a heck of a high school basketball game right there. I mean, you know, we, we made a couple runs. They fought back. Uh, their kids didn't quit. Uh, yeah, that's a heck of a high school basketball game right there. Both teams not wanting to lose. And, uh, you know, we just were fortunate to make another play or two than they did. But that, that's, a, that's a heck of a high school basketball game right there and you know both teams were really bothered by the turnover bug it seemed in this game how are you able to weather that storm yeah, you know both teams play pretty hard defensively I mean they get out of passing lanes and play physical and you know we try to play that same way and yeah so we you know keep telling our kids just keep battling in there and making plays and you know I thought we rebounded real well I ain't a stookie at a heck of a game you know our big girl inside made two huge free throws and I don't know she she had to have double digits and rebounds but uh, you know that's a real good the effort out of our team. Emma Grimm, another player who had a heck of a performance. I believe it was a 20 points she scored. I score in the game. What did you think of her performance? Yeah, Emma's just an all-around player. You know, we, we had her on the Mueller girl all night. You know, one of their better players. And Emma plays both ends of the floor. She's been rebounding well for us. You know, I, you got to give Emma some credit. They, she wasn't hitting her three, and they were coming at her hard. And she was she was ripping it and going and getting to the rim. And, you know, the big play she had is she made that little dump pass to Anna Stuckey the one time and was a big basket for us. But... You know, got the effort out of our kids. Well, you know you'll be playing the second game tomorrow. The only thing left to find out is who are you going to be playing. It's going to be Brian versus Spalding in just a moment. So we'll look forward to that game tomorrow. Look forward to the whole tournament tomorrow. Uh, good, best of luck then, and uh, congratulations tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Head coach, head coach Steve Brown of the Striker Girls joining us here on the Golden Bear Sports Network. I'm Thad Golf. We'll be back in a moment on the Golden Bear Sports Network. 
BMU High Speed Internet is now cheaper than ever. Now just $30 a month, that's $100 a year in savings. Get it with BMU Extended Basic Cable for all your sports, movies, and reality shows, plus local programming, including high school sports and community events. Not to mention a local help desk and support team for when you need them. Now for the fine print. We don't have any. No contracts or hidden fees. Call BMU today at 419-633-6100 or visit us on the web at cityofbryan.net. All right, and BMU Internet is getting even better starting January 1st. We're offering local help desk support 24-7, 365. We know that problems don't happen when it's convenient, so why should help only be around when it's convenient? Call 419-633-0900 for BMU Internet support anytime, any day, starting January 1st. It's a service from Bryan Municipal Utilities. Again, 633-0900. Chris Malenga and Thad Goff here. Game uh, one is in the books, 52-50. Let's take a look at some stats first for Fairview. Fairview as a team shot 45% from the field. They were 20 of 44. They were 13 of 28 from inside the three-point arc. They were 7 of 16 from outside the arc. And they were just an abysmal 23% from the field, uh, from the free throw line, 3 of 13. They had 20 rebounds, 10 offensive, 10 defensive, 5 steals, 3 blocks, and 20 turnovers. Leading scorer was Olivia Racisa. She was 7 of 12 from the field and uh, 18 points. She was also four of seven from behind the three-point arc, including nine points, three back-to-back uh, -back threes. Kirsten Klein is four of six from the field for 10 points. She was one of four from the line. Mercedes Wagner, just eight points, three of eight, um, and two of six from the line. Michelle Marshall, seven points. She was three of seven and 0 of two from the foul line. Riley Mueller was two of five from the field. She had one three-point basket, one two-point basket. And Kendall Baker, two points, one of six from the field for striker, excuse me, Fairview's 20 points. Taking a look at the performance of the striker Panthers, they had two players in double figures as well. Emma Grimm led all uh, players uh, with 20 points. Striker went 14 of 38 for 36 percent from the field. They were 11 of 23 from inside the arc, just 3 of 15 from outside the arc. They were 21 of 30 from uh, the foul line for 70 percent. They had 16 rebounds, uh, 9 offensive, 7 defensive, 3 steals, a block, and 18 turnovers. Emma Grimm, 5 of 14 from the field for 20 points. She was also 2 of 7 from behind the arc and 8 of 10 from the foul line. Courtney Stewart had 17 points. She was 5 of 11 from the field, 1 of 3 from behind the arc, and 6 of 12 from the foul line. Brittany Haynes had 8 points. She was 2 of 5 from the field, 4 of 4 from the line. Anna Stuckey, 4 points, 1 of 3 from the field, and 2 of 3 from the line. And Mackenzie Caldwell had 2 points. She was 1 of 4 from the field, and that gave Stryker their 52 points. Thoughts, Dad, on this one? Well, obviously a gritty performance. Uh, Steve Brown talked about that a little bit, but it was a gritty performance by both teams. Had to overcome a lot of turnovers. And for Stryker, they got to be glad to get out of here with the win. And, uh, well, I say get out of here, but they're going to be right back here tomorrow night. Yeah, they're in the championship game, and they will face the winner of Brian and Holding. We're going to have that one for you here coming up shortly on the Golden Bear Sports Network. For now, we're going to take this time out back after this.